Euro 2024 is just around the corner now. England have had their first friendly against Bosnia on Monday night and Gareth Southgate must name his final 26-man squad by Friday the 7th of June. So in this video, I'm going to do Gareth a favour and talk you through the squad that I would pick. If you enjoyed this one, hit like and subscribe and let's jump straight into it. Right, so starting with our goalkeepers. Gareth Southgate named four goalkeepers in his squad in the form of Jordan Pickford, Dean Henderson, Aaron Ramsdale and James Trafford. And the first keeper, of course, is going to be Jordan Pickford. He's been England's number one for three tournaments in a row now and he is still more than capable between the sticks. He's never really put a foot wrong either, so he is an obvious choice as number one. Second choice is Aaron Ramsdale, despite the fact that Arsenal have been keen to cast him aside this season. He is definitely the second best keeper that we have in the squad. And my third and final choice to make it into the final 26 is Dean Henderson. Obviously Trafford had an excellent season last year, struggled a bit more with Burnley but that's understandable. I think it's just a little bit too early for him to be involved. The pair of them aren't going to play either way but I'm just thinking if it does get down to third choice keeper then Henderson is going to be the one that you would want to pick. Moving swiftly on to defenders and we've got John Stones, obvious choice, he's going to be a starting centre-back for us after yet another Premier League title this season. Harry Maguire, I know there are some people that will want to cast him out of their squad, has had a little bit of a resurgence for Man United this season and I think they have started to realise that he wasn't actually the biggest problem in that squad all along. For me, alongside Stones, he is still a starting centre-back. I don't think we have anyone as good as him that reads the game, so he is a must in there for me. Carl Walker, of course, comes in at right-back. He is 34 now, so this could well be his last tournament for England. Although he did make more Premier League appearances for Man City this season than he did in the previous season, which surprised me. Either way, he's our most experienced international right-back and he has to be on the plane. Ezri Konta has had an excellent season for Aston Villa. He was part of six clean sheets in the Premier League and of course they finished in the Champions League spots. And for me, he's probably one of the few defenders that is actually pushing for a potential starting place at the tournament. Southgate constantly adapted Konta on Monday night against Bosnia. He was right back, centre back and left back throughout the match. He earned a penalty that Palmer, of course, converted, and I think he will have very much impressed the manager from that performance. Very interesting to see him tried out as left-back, given that Luke Shaw is our only natural left-back in the squad. So clearly Southgate has him in mind for there, and he's going to be useful for his versatility. Mark Gahey, another player that had a really strong end to the season for Crystal Palace with four clean sheets. He got a solid hour in the friendly on Monday and looked very comfortable, albeit against a very weak opposition. Can't particularly see him pushing for the starting lineup, but a very solid backup if needed. Kieran Trippier was captain in the same friendly as one of the most senior players in the starting lineup. And with Luke Shaw, a significant injury doubt is supposedly the shoe in at left back, despite the fact that he is a natural right back. He's obviously an attacking right back, so it's good to see that he'll be able to fill the boots of Shaw in that attacking sense. I do slightly worry about Pacey Wiggins against him, but I do like his leadership on the pitch and he was instructing a lot of the other players the other night. He did also miss a few seasons with injury himself this season but if he is available and Shaw is a doubt then I think he's got to be in there. Luke Shaw has missed a ton of football this season. He only played 15 matches in all competitions and he has been out with injury since February. He is sounding like a big doubt for the start of the tournament but there has been a lot of talk about the fact that because of this expanded 26-man squad that we have that we may be able to bring him along and hope that he gets fit midway through the tournament. We've seen the same before in the past with the likes of Harry Maguire. He did come in, he did improve the team. So I think with that expanded squad in mind, then Shaw will be on the plane. My second last defensive choice is Joe Gomez. He played a lot of football for Liverpool this season, 51 matches in all competitions, popped up with a few assists as well. And again, I think he's useful because he can play all across the back line. He played 19 games at left back and 25 at right back this season. So if there is any injuries on either flank, then we do have a versatile option there too. My last defensive choice is Jared Bramthwaite, who has enjoyed his breakout season for Everton. Now in terms of picking between him and Dunk, I think it was easy for me. Dunk is clearly the more experienced centre-back, but he is not a player for the future. Now, you could argue if we had a significant amount of injuries in defence, then you would want an experienced player to come in. 
but I think we have enough experience in the other defensive options to cover that eventuality. This is also an aging defence, so in the next couple of tournaments we're going to have to start bringing some younger defensive players into the team. And what a brilliant experience it will be for Branthwaite to go out to Germany. I'm not saying that he'll get playing time, but to be around that squad and to start to be embedded into the setup. Dunk is not a player for the future and that's why he's not made the squad for me. Quanta could just as easily be in there for the same reasons as Branthwaite, but Branthwaite has just picked it for me. Now, our midfield Fielders. Obviously, Jude Bellingham is the first name on the sheet for me. La Liga, Champions League and League Cup in his first season at Real Madrid is just ridiculous. 23 goals, 13 assists. He's come on in a real attacking sense this season too. And of course, once a young English player starts to really succeed and is at the top of his game already, people start to drag him down. He is excellent. He is a natural winner and we desperately need those in our team. And right in there with him is Declan Rice, who's also had a great season despite not having any silverware to show for it. He's come into that Arsenal team and strengthened that midfield considerably. Almost doubled the amount of goal involvements too, which is really important. Got some Champions League experience too, which will come in really handy at the Euros. Now my third choice is Adam Wharton and I'm going to be honest, I would actually go as far as to put him in the starting lineup. This guy is absolutely unbelievable. He's only been playing Premier League football since signing for Crystal Palace in January from Blackburn Rovers, but Rovers fans have been raving about him for years and he has effortlessly blended into the Premier League already. He is a very understated player, so I can imagine there are some people that don't understand why people are raving about him, but his cameo on Monday just showed how good he is. His reading of the game, the weighting of his passes, he drives the ball forward. Even Southgate has been raving about him and Mainu saying these are players that we've needed in the England setup for years and you can see why. If Southgate wants to be really brave, I would put him right in that midfield three with Bellingham and Rice. Next up, we've got Trent Arnold, who I'm going to be honest, I'm still not completely sold on this midfield experiment. Obviously, it does alleviate him of his defensive duties, which is always a plus. He's much better going forwards. But he looked a lot more comfortable and his goal on Monday finally came once he slotted into right back after the substitutions were made. So he probably is still going to be used as a defender in this tournament if he does get any game time at all. But he was in the midfielders category when the provisional score came out, so I'm keeping him in midfielders and he has to come. Conor Gallagher, I'm going to be honest, he's the least exciting midfield pick. He doesn't play a particularly flattering role for Chelsea or England. And because of that, I don't think he's spectacular, but he is decent and he can play that box-to-box -box role well. He is a very Southgate-type player, so I have a feeling he's going to be the one lining up with Bellingham and Rice in that midfield three. He is reliable, but not particularly exciting, and I do think someone like Wharton would level up that midfield a bit more. And last but not least, we've got Kobe Mainu, another player who has enjoyed a fantastic season for Man United. Five goals and three assists in all competitions, that fantastic goal against Liverpool in the league and of course the opener against Man City in the FA Cup he is the real deal he's only going to get better and if he continues this trajectory he is going to be involved in the England setup for years to come so what better time than to bring him now that does mean there is just one midfielder from Gareth Southgate's provisional squad that I wouldn't bring and it's Curtis Jones don't have anything against Jones at all he posted the same amount of goals and assists as Mainu in virtually the same amount of games but for me he just lacks that bit of star power at the moment and that ability to come on and change matches so that's the reason he hasn't made the cut for me and lastly moving on to our forwards Harry Kane is obviously the first choice here 44 goals and 12 assists in his first season for Bayern Munich absolutely mental stats he is a world-class striker we really, really could have done with him finally winning something this season. To just get that off his chest before he heads out to the Euros, I think it would have done him the world of good. But still, insane stats that he's posted. You saw when he came on in the friendly that he's just a class above any other forward that we have. Bukayo Saka, another obvious choice. 20 goals and 14 assists for him this season, just two less than the season before, so incredibly consistent for Arsenal. He did seem to be struggling with some injury problems towards the end of the season, but assuming that he is fit, then he has to be there. Phil Foden, the Premier League player of the season, 27 goals and 12 assists for him this year. He's been an absolute menace for Man City. Get him playing in the right position in this England team and he is going to do some serious damage. And speaking of doing damage, I've also got a Bere Eze. Being a QPR fan, I have talked about this guy playing for England for years and I think his performance against Bosnia really started to show people what he could do. He didn't get a goal, he didn't get an assist but he was the most attacking player on the pitch. He was taking people on. He can be England's secret weapon this summer. 11 goals and six assists in 27 appearances for Crystal Palace this season. Really came into his own again under the new manager. If he is not on the plane, I am going to riot. 
and I hate how much I love him, but another player that has to be there is Cole Palmer. 22 goals and 11 assists this season, the Premier League's second top goal scorer behind Erling Haaland after moving into that Chelsea team. It doesn't matter what ball you give him or what position he's playing in, this guy just creates out of nothing. My controversial opinion right now is I would actually start him ahead of Saka. Jack Grealish, lucky guy to be in this squad, I'm gonna be honest. Less appearances for Man City this season, three goals, three assists. There are some forwards that I haven't included that probably could deserve a shout ahead of him. The only reason I do have him in there is we've got a lot of young attacking options that are new to the squad. He's been familiar with the setup for a few years now, and he has been at the mercy of Pep Guardiola's team selections. He won a treble with them the season before, and in any other team, he's starting every week. So I don't think his slight drop-off can be put down to him necessarily, and more so just that ridiculous depth in that Man City squad. Southgate has been daring in calling up some newer players into the team, but I do think that we need a little bit of consistency up front, so Grealish makes it in on this basis. Ollie Watkins had a very good season too, 19 goals and 13 assists, and it's become very clear over the last few England games that Southgate favours him as Kane's deputy. The interesting thing is England just don't really play to suit him, not in the same way that Aston Villa do. And so I think if we do find ourselves in a situation where he has to come into the team because, say, Kane's injured, we'd probably have to make a couple of other tweaks in order to serve him best. Still, excellent form for Aston Villa this season, so he makes the cut. And my final choice in my 26-man squad is Ivan Tony, who I'm going to be honest, just like Grealish, is probably quite lucky to make it here. He got straight off the mark for Brentford after returning from his gambling ban in January, scoring four goals in five matches, including against Spurs and Liverpool. And then he just hit a real dry patch and didn't score for the 13 or 14 remaining matches that he played. But he does get in on a couple of things. One, his profile is a little bit more similar to that of a Harry Kane type striker, and so Southgate may opt to bring him in in certain situations. He's also, of course, a very good penalty taker, and those are always handy in international tournaments. He does also have that bit of cockiness and arrogance, which can always be useful in these kind of high pressure situations. Situations. So finally, let's cover the three forwards who haven't made it into my squad. First up, we've got Anthony Gordon. I'm actually a big fan of him. He's had a really good season for Newcastle. He's young, he's promising. But when he's competing for a place out on that left wing against potentially Grealish, Eze, and maybe even Foden, he just falls to the bottom of the pile for me. All of those other players have that bit of star power that sort of maverick quality about them. And I'm just not seeing enough of that yet for him to make this final squad. After 20 goals and 10 assists in all competitions, Jared Bowen is definitely the harshest call I've made to leave out here. My issue is I'm just not convinced about him playing for England. That's eight caps now without a goal. He's often forced out onto that right wing, which I know he played about 50% of his games out there for West Ham this season but he has come into his own as their sole centre forward. And he's just not going to get that opportunity up front. He looked pretty uncomfortable in the game against Bosnia. He does have his moments, but unfortunately I can't fit him in here. And my last exemption is James Madison. He looked very promising at the start of the season when Spurs were right at the top of the league. But after that ankle injury kept him out for a couple of months, his goal involvements have been few and far between. Madison has always looked a promising player, but he's one that I think has needed to add goal involvements to his game. I've just not seen enough of that at Spurs for him to warrant a place here. When he came on in the friendly on Monday as well, a lot of the moves he was trying just didn't come off. And that's a bit concerning when you're coming on against a tired Bosnia team that were 1-0, 2-0 down at this point. When you look at the competition in that number 10 space, which could be anyone from Bellingham to Foden to Eze, he's just not high enough up the list for me. So there we go, that is my final 26-man squad for Euro 2024. What do you think? Any players I have got totally wrong? Let me know in the comments below, I will happily take the flack. I think this is an incredibly strong squad, I'd be very happy if this is what Southgate took. In my next England video, I am going to be predicting every stage of the tournament, so if that's something you're interested in watching, then make sure you hit like and subscribe to be notified when that one goes up. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers!